Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. Often, you know, you hear about a lot of technology innovations in the skilling space, in the vocational space. And for most of you, skill very may not be something that you never heard of. What I mean to say, that, say is that skill very is something we all have heard about and seen their work. The fantastic work Skillvery has been doing in terms of uh, integrating technology for simulators and simulation based uh, skilling. But today they are not just doing that, they are also on par with many other recent technology developments. So we have with us today Mr. Sabarinath C. Nair, whom we will call Sabari in this conversation. So welcome to this talk, Sabari. And uh, we would really like to learn from you about the story of Skillvery, of course, but then you can tie it up with how Metaverse is changing the way we learn. Uh, especially, uh, you know, fields like welding, painting and others. And uh, also tell us the scope it has for students and for people who can partner with you, uh, you know, in adding value to the skilling ecosystem. So let's get started. Thank you, Madhuri. Metaverse is a very interesting term because it's a, it is an old term, but it, uh, recently Facebook changed its name to Met Meta and <laughs> A uh, lot of people have been using this term. It's a very evolving term. So, uh, you know, it's very hard to define these things are metaverse, these things are not metaverse. It's an evolving term. But broadly, it has got to do with, uh, you know, having a virtual reality or augmented reality immersive experience, having some kind of uh, uh, blockchain backed uh, validations, having some kind of Web 3.0 kind of systems in place having the ability to collaborate real time and live. Uh, so these are the basic components of a metaverse. But you know, it's an evolving term and uh, I think people should not be afraid of the term. It's it's something that will help people in the long run. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you just mentioned uh, virtual reality, right? Mm -hmm. So I think most of us are familiar with virtual reality also as a means of entertainment. We enjoy watching few things and all, right? Mm -hmm. So please tell us more about how this particular technology you're using in helping people learn through simulation-based learning. Sure. So if, uh, you know, if I may... Um, share my screen briefly. I wanted to show one interesting picture I saw on the internet okay. recently. So it's uh, called the Learning Theory Pyramid. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know uh, put out by somebody called Lucas and you can follow him here at Lucas Value. Yeah. So what he says is that the retention rate after learning, if it's a lecture, it's only 5%. If you read, it adds another 10%. If you have an audiovisual medium, it adds another 20%. If you have a demonstration, it comes up to 30%. Mm. So typical e-learning methods and typical classroom learning methods stop at that 30%. Mm. Now, if you look at uh, practice by doing, it takes it takes you up to 75%. Mm. Uh, so that's where I think virtual reality or augmented reality or any kind of immersive learning helps because, you know, you're if you are doing something, if you are seeing it on a 2D screen, on the computer screen or on the mobile screen and, and doing something, it doesn't feel properly doing it. But if you are wearing a headset and then uh, you know, you're immersed in a 3D world and you are interacting with that 3D world with your real hands or with some tools, that gives you that uh, practice by doing level. So your retention is much higher at 75%. Now, mm -hmm. when we come to metaverse, it's a collaborative environment in virtual reality also. So there are uh, people collaborating on it and then let's see, you would do it as a group activity. So then you you learn yourself and then you teach your peer. So that teaching others component also comes in. So the learning comes out to 90%. So that is three times the conventional uh, methods of uh, learning. So just this picture I wanted to share because okay. I, I found it very easy to connect with you know i found it very profound i thought it, it's a very yeah. simple and easy picture to understand yeah it's building up on what we learned about you know how practice helps us learn better yeah. the immersive environment which you are trying to show through that yeah you know not just by theoretical reading or even watching i think until mm. you do it by your hand uh you know you will not be able to get yeah. it 
and uh, i remember trying the simulator of yours the skill very no. simulator myself and i enjoyed it was fun uh, you know but uh, from there i think that's been quite some time now i'm sure the technology has evolved over the last 3 3 or 4 years yeah. So today where are we in terms of uh, augmented and virtual reality and then of course you told us about metaverse mm. kind of being an umbrella term i yes guess, yes right? yes you are right yes yeah and yeah. just for the others benefit you know you have tried it so you you know what it is but for the others benefit i'm sure many of the audience would have seen a 3d movie mm. so when you see a 2d movie you are sitting in a uh, you know seat and you are seeing something move on a screen which you which you know is separate from you Mm. but when you are seeing a 3d movie you have things coming towards you you are wearing a 3d glass and you you are seeing co- things coming towards you uh so virtual reality is one step ahead of that you know in in 3d movie you are seeing it only from one direction but in virtual reality one is that it comes from all the directions you know you are you are inside the movie the movie is not coming towards you but you are inside the movie all all sides of you are part of the movie itself Yeah. and then the other thing is that you can walk around and interact which is something you can't do with a 3d movie so it's like a it's like a higher level of a 3d movie so that's that's how i try and explain virtual reality to uh, in in layman language okay yeah uh, so um uh, last time when you tried i think we had welding and painting on the uh, virtual okay. reality simulation platform um uh, and uh, we have you know in in painting we were teaching people how to paint in addition to that we have built an ar application which will help painters to uh, go to a house and then look at the walls map out the walls that they have to paint it converts it to a 3d uh, drawing which yeah. goes to a cloud and then they can use it to create a quote uh, for the customer saying that you know this is the total area of the walls in in your house these are the doors and windows that we are not going to paint therefore this is the total area therefore this is the total quantity of paint required and therefore this is the quantity of uh, you know this is the time taken to do the job and therefore this is my rate karke you you have a report coming out from that kind of a tool and then there is a tool for uh, learning how to maintain your spray equipment mm mm-hmm. okay so uh, so if you look at uh, decorative painting as an example Uh, a painter who is on the field has all the tools needed for him to become a much more productive person mm. so currently when you say painter the the image that comes to mind is a dirty uh, no dirty looking person with a brush in hand and you know, he makes your place also dirty yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the that's the uh, image that comes to your mind but the transformation that we are helping uh, you know we we have partnered with nippon paint recently yeah uh, that's a transformation we are bringing to the ground where uh, together with nippon paint we are teaching painters to do painting at a much higher level mm. so they they have access to a uh, better technology of uh, assessment visualization executing the project you know doing it in a clean manner so that uh, the the premises do not become dirty doing it in a clean manner so that they don't become dirty themselves and then you know there is much more dignity of labor to that so that is on the industrial side that's one uh, change that has happened and uh, on the iti side uh, we have also made other modules for many of the trades in the iti so for example we have a module for solar technician so if somebody has to uh, go to uh, a site and then install a solar panel and inverter system for them then this tool will teach them how to do it step by step Mm-hmm. this we had uh, worked together with uh, selco foundation uh, to build yeah. this tool and it's been used in 10 locations across the country and now i think selco is taking it to tanzania also so it's a it's a tool that has been built in india and that's gone to uh, that's, africa also that's so nice to hear <laughs> yeah and recently we also built a tool for uh, ac repair mechanic so uh, this is something that i think will will be a game changer in the coming year because you know all of us require ac anywhere you know except for the himalayan states yeah uh, ac is a it has become an essential part of daily life right. and acs don't work now and then and we have to call a technician and then the technician has to be knowledgeable hmm. so we uh, piloted this with a few real 
AC technicians and they absolutely loved it. They said, you know, they have 15, 20 years of experience and they take three, four years for a youngster who is joining them to take them up to speed. Mm. And with our tool, they have been able to reduce it to three months. Okay. What used to take three years. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is a very good example uh, of few very critical things that the skilling ecosystem is actually grappling with. I would say first is the dignity of labor yeah. that you mentioned. And second is a good example of how technology infusion changes the complete image of the manual work, mm -hmm. right? Like you gave the painting example, which was so very pertinent and relevant. And it's so good to hear that you have also enhanced it to make it like a complete smart solution, I would yeah. say, right? Because you're able to estimate the cost, the area of uh, painting, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this is helping a lot of people. You now, from the uh, education and training side, which is a very, you know, which is an area of passion for you, as we can see, and also yeah. you are an innovator yourself. Uh, how do you see the technical education system, um, you know, embracing this change in technology adoption? Uh, one, from the point of view of, uh, let's say, the welding simulator or the painting uh, kind of uh, trade, which is being uh, taught through simulation. And two is the affordability. So we can keep some ITIs perhaps in mind, the private mm. ITIs and the mm. government ITIs. Mm. Uh, what is the adoption rate? How uh, how are they taking this up? Like over the years, you must have seen a trend, right? Yeah. Today, is there any uh, new development or has COVID brought in any you know positive development in such uh, technology adoption? Um, so th there are multiple aspects to this. You know, I would like to go one by one. So uh, mm. I will pick up the last one, COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been selling here in India, we have been selling in uh, North America, Canada, US. And all. So during the COVID time, uh, uh, the, the US market and Canada market said, you know, um, we want to make it more mass scale adoptable. So mm -hmm. we would we would buy simulators for each of our students and then send it to their homes. Yeah. Because a typical e-learning module um, can be uh, done remotely with a with, uh, laptop or a mobile phone mm. but when you have to learn by doing and especially if it is something like an ac repair where you have to perform some action or if it's painting or welding where you have to take a tool and do some movement with your hand seeing a video uh, will be only as good as learning to swim or to uh, do a bicycle ride by watching a youtube video you have to do it unless you do it you can't learn it right so for the Western market at that point of time, I'm talking about early 2020, for the Western market at that point of time, it was affordable for them to uh, buy one simulator for each of their students and then ship it to their homes. Mm -hmm. So it was not uh, possible at that time for the Indian market. But very soon we saw, uh, as the COVID eased, you know, we had set up a state-of-the-art uh, multi-skill metaverse lab at uh, Government ITI Katak in Odisha. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so there, there were six uh, simulators and a common server and a uh, lot of analytics and, and the simulate and the lab had welding, painting, solar technician and AC repair mechanic all rolled into one. So though the lab cost a few tens of lakhs, but when you look at how many students are benefiting from that, you know, because there are six systems, the entire unit of an ITA, one unit of an ITA is 20 students. So all of them can come and use it. You know, prior to that, how it was happening is that uh, uh, every ITI used to buy one or two simulators. With one simulator, one person will be doing, three other people will be watching. The remaining 16 people will be sitting idle. Okay. So that changed. You know? One was that uh, Facebook came into the picture with uh, the Oculus uh, virtual reality headset. And they had drastically dropped the price to some 300 400 dollars which translated to, translated to some 30 40 thousand rupees in indian rupees terms mm. and that is not a very high cost you know if you look at the hardware cost that's not very high because the phone that many people now own is costing much more than that yes uh, and secondly uh this cost is shared across multiple trades so uh, ITA Katak has some 2,500 or more students, mm. of which some 1,500 or more students were covered by this XR uh, multiverse lab, uh, metaverse lab. Mm. So when you divide the cost of setting it up by the number of students who are benefiting it every year, yeah, then it becomes highly affordable. Right. 
Right. I think we should have a long term perspective and the kind of ROI one is looking at is also, you know, in the long run, it's not like immediately you're going to get something out of it. But as you said, and also additionally, I think, uh, uh, you know, they can try it out repeatedly, right? Whenever mm. students, so that's one more thing, which is, I think, a good thing about having a lab in their own premises. Mm. Uh, so uh, other than this ITI, have you also experimented or tried out uh, the lab in other places? And what has been the response uh, in other places? Uh, so uh, our success as of today has been more abroad than in India okay. because there is a slight uh, uh, adoption time taken. Mm. So we have these uh, beautiful, on our YouTube channel, we have these uh, wonderful uh, testimonials from Canada and US uh, where you know, the, the teachers talk about how it not only helps in teaching the current batch of students, but also whenever they have a admission fair, yeah. They use these simulators to tell the students that this is how you do welding, this is how you do painting, this is how you do AC repair. Mm. So they have been able to attract more students also to their institute by using the simulation. This is, this is the experience abroad. Mm. Now in India, we have ITA, Katek, uh, government ITA, owned, and then there are three, four other ITAs that are currently in the process of implementing it. I should be in another three, four weeks time, I should be able to share the names. So like, for example, ITA owned has... Um, uh, around uh, 17 simulators. Okay. So the you know for us the highest is uh, 30 simulators in Canada in in one Vancouver Community College in Canada. But mm -hmm. the ITI on this becoming world number two in in that sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the like I said the cost of the hardware has come down. Uh, and we are very flexible with the cost of the software. We have an annual licensing model also. And mm -hmm. once we learned that, you know, it, the the entire classroom having an access is a much more effective way. You know, having five or six simulators is much better than having one simulator. Mm -hmm. Once that model has come, it it's spreading like wild wildfire, and the the students absolutely love it. So we have a lot of situations where uh, the students are more uh, social media savvy. So mm -hmm. uh, my engineers tell me that you know when they go to the ITI, they say they give their phone and ask them to record them using it and then they put it on Instagram, they put it on uh, uh, Facebook. Yeah. And I think the adoption in India will also go up. You know, I think the the lethargy or, you know, the initial hiccup was that yeah. uh, Indian policymakers used to assume that India is poor, India will only take, you know, scale down products, uh, all that. But I think the adoption of UPI in terms of payment, you, know, mm. you see the street vendors selling uh, Nibu Pani or uh, you know uh, yeah. tender coconut water, they they accept uh, digital payments today. Yeah, right. So the adoption here is far more uh, in terms of fintech than abroad. So that's one. You know, I, whenever uh, I go to the US or Europe, I find it's much more difficult to transfer money than here in India, and and you have the apps for everything here, you know. Yeah. You, you have Dunzo, you have uh, Swiggy, Insta, Mart. Everything is there, which is not as uh, easy in in the foreign markets. So yeah. the adoption has been much higher here. And also, if you look at uh, you know, there is this other uh, wrong notion that rural India is not yeah. tech savvy, or rural India does not um, adopt technology. That's also wrong. Um, now the smartphone penetration is quite high. The mobile internet penetration is also quite high. 4G is commonly available everywhere. If you simply look at the Instagram reels that come out and that go viral, most of it is from tier three or tier four towns. Right. right. So it is a wrong notion to say that uh, rural India will not adopt technology. So it's it's yeah. just the uh, you know policymakers sitting in their air conditioned offices <laughs> in Delhi making yeah. these wrong assumptions. So the yeah, people that's... are proving it wrong. Yeah, that's true. When we look at it from ground up, like you gave the example of reels, uh, which is yeah. so true, uh, you know, and also I think these misconceptions and the uh, mindset issues and all, if we are able to gradually overcome, I'm sure 
even in india uh, you know the adoption rate could be much more uh, in terms of embracing these technologies for uh, mm. learning i would say not just accelerating but scaling and also i think making it fun which i think is most critical yeah because you just mentioned about how students love to take pictures selfies you know that's yeah. the culture we are living in today and that's the age group we need to target yeah. Yeah, so uh, now talking about students, so would you want to give some advice to the students about uh, the benefits of learning this way, uh, you know, and also in the context of metaverse again? Yeah, one is that, you know, um, uh, they, they don't have to be afraid of technology and most of them are not afraid of technology. I have seen uh, the kids uh, adopt it much better than their trainers. You know? right. uh, in many ITAs, we have the students are far more able to handle the device and, you know, they, they end up, uh, for example, when we installed our AC repair training in one of our uh, ITA customers, one student picked it up and then for all the other students, he only taught and mm. he observed it for uh, just 20-30 uh, minutes and then he figured it out and then he taught all the other students in his uh, class. <laughs> uh, which is, I think, a very good sign. The kids are picking up really fast. And uh, uh, the other advice is that, you know, the tendency to pick uh, short-term uh, career goals over a long-term career goal. So, um, 2014, there was a study uh, which mapped the aspirations of students versus the opportunities. So, people wanted to be in easier uh, you know easier trade soft skills or banking financial sector or you know nobody wanted to be a welder or a construction sector worker but the opportunities are more there a crane operator can earn you much more salary than a, a software engineer so this is something that people may not know but once they know then uh, the, the career progression is far more better there there, there is a blind uh, beeline for you know getting into it and software so there are far more fulfilling careers and then um, there is much more earning potential and social mobility possible with a lot of other skills so uh, explore and learn and and metaverse offers you a chance to try these out without hurting yourself or mm. uh, you know get to know what a trade is all about and then decide yeah and that's true and I think such labs are uh, most needed where students can just go and play around and, you know, get an idea about uh, what it is. So I think the uh, push for it can also be driven from the student side, from the parent side, which I think is yet to be explored much in our country. And also before we close this conversation, I'd like to know from you, if people are interested in partnering you or in contributing to your efforts and, uh, you know, using the simulators, the setting up the lab, how should they approach you and what would be the benefits for them? Yeah. So there are multiple kinds of people who can partner with us and we have partnered also. So for example, um, in uh, the uh, paint sector, we had worked with, we have worked with almost all paint companies, but in particular, uh, uh, an outreach program that has targeted real end users at a large scale has been this initiative with Nikon Paint. Okay. where ordinary painters are trained to become a much uh, more productive painter who can do jobs at four times the speed that they're doing currently. Mm. So the earning potential goes up three, four times. Mm. And standard living also goes up. So that is one way, you know, uh, the sectors of welding, painting, um, uh, or AC repair, or solar technician are all areas where we work with uh, partners already and we are open to working with newer partners. The second is uh, the intervention at uh, ITI. Mm. So it is one of the neglected sectors in India, I would say, you know, uh, in, in terms of people focusing more on the engineering colleges than uh, ITAs or polytechnic. And uh, again, like I said, there are uh, specific areas where the chances of getting a job is much higher if you are in an ITI versus if you are in an engineering college. Yeah. That is one. And second is, you know, the thankfully the government has acted very swiftly and syllabus is now up to date to what industry needs. Mm. But the equipment at the ITI, most of the places are not great. You know, if you if you exclude the top three ITIs of a state, then the equipment is not really up to date. Mm. So even though the syllabus is up to date, the the ITI is not able to give hands-on practice. 
to the students uh, because they don't have the right equipment. So with this in group, with uh, JCB, with uh, uh, Cognizant, with uh, Titan, a lot of companies we have worked together to have a package for upgrading the equipment at ITI mm. and combine it with the Metaverse lab. Okay. So that you know, every year, some 2,000 students in that ITI is uh, positively impacted. Mm. Okay. So people can write to me or uh, write to uh, sales at skillberry.com and then we can discuss partnerships. Sure. Yeah, that would be really nice. So on uh, behalf of NSN, I invite uh, whoever is interested to contact the Skillberry team in case you wish to explore uh, Metaverse and also enhance the technology infusion in your programs. So on that note, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sabri, for talking to me today. Uh, please share all the updates with us. We would be happy to keep updating others about the developments and the positive impact you are creating uh, through technology. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you. Bye.